Okay. Uh, good afternoon. Today is July 19th. We're going to complete the study of uh, role, uncoupled linear roll shift motion. And uh, what we need is to describe a method, very simple method to estimate the excitation moment. Okay, the waves generate a, a moment which forces the, the ship to oscillate in row. We're going to present a very simple procedure to estimate that. Um, we need, uh, I think we need to, to apply a correction factor to that. Hopefully during this, uh, these days, I will be able to look it up in the literature and try to find out a, a factor. I, I will explain that in a second, what we call the effective slope, okay? So it's like the slope that we're going to be calculating today, we have to apply a correction factor and hopefully I will be able to give it to you. So you will have uh, the ability to correct because the, the, the otherwise the results are gonna be off by, by a large margin. Okay, and at the end, I just uh, to solve the equation, I mean, it's a uh, second order differential equation. The only new or, or, or uh, what can I say? The only uh, uh, particular about the solution of this equation is that some components of this equation depend on the frequency, okay? Especially the damping, and also the excitation, okay? Uh, the other two, the virtual inertia, we're going to just take it as a constant and the GM, we're not going to consider any changes for that. But the damping and, and the excitation, yeah, they do depend on the frequency. But the, once you have it, okay, we can put it in the equation and just solve it. The solution of course is gonna be a complex amplitude, but that's all. Okay, so let's complete it. And then at the end, I'm going to describe the, the next assignment and also the procedure to complete the uh, experimental work that we are going to be developing this Friday. Okay, so that's the agenda for this afternoon. Okay, uh, let me share the screen. Okay. Can you see my screen? Uh, yes, we can see. Thank you. Okay. Um, last session, we were discussing about how to estimate the damping, okay? And I presented a procedure from Imeno. Now, the this equation here, okay, this is not from Imeno's work. Okay, now uh, we explained that uh, we developed some tests here at the lake with engineer Juan Pinto for his graduation work. And the problem was that the two work by Imeno and by Professor Ikeda, they work together. In some cases, somebody call it the Imeno's method, and some author call it the Ikeda's work, okay? So we just decided that we would call it Imeno Ikeda formula and that's it, okay? So the two are working, uh, I, I think we're collaborating in, in, in uh, I think it's Osaka Prefecture University in Japan. But anyway, the thing is that this formula is presented in the reference that I'm showing you here at the bottom of this page, okay? And you see that uh, here we have the name Ikeda, okay? Okay. Okay, you see here it's Ikeda, okay? And this is in 2012, right? So this is the formula that uh, you're going to be using. Okay, now these parameters, A1, X5, et cetera, they are defined in this paper. So you have to download it and uh, 
in there you can see the, the definition. It's just every, every, all of these parameters depend on the characteristic of the shift, in this case, the, the shift model, right? And they are non-dimensional, right? So there is no problem in trying to use that, okay? You need a coefficient, you need the ratio between this and that and things like that. So there is no problem to apply it, but you need to look it up in this reference, okay? Now, in this case, okay, it, the, in this work, Ikeda and these authors, they present a formula to alter, to affect, or to include, to consider the effect of the velocity, right? So this uh, number here uh, was deduced from tests with no velocity. And if you want to include the velocity, the influence of velocity, then you have to apply this formula. In our case, the ship or the model will be in the transverse direction with respect to the waves. And of course, it's not moving in the axial direction. So this is the expression, okay? This is the expression that you need to, to apply. Okay, so this is to be applied in this report, okay? Now, all I wanted to emphasize here was that this is not from Imeno's uh, report, this is from Ikeda's work, okay? So uh, you have it, so you can uh, look it up in the web, download it, and there is the definition of all of these uh, constants, okay? Now, this is something that also, I want you to use this. So I'm going to give you this program. Uh, it's written in Fortran, but the, I don't know, if you want to uh, make any improvements, yes, uh, we can share the, the source code with you, okay? In your case, you need to, uh, give as data the uh, a, this is the component of the generation of wave without without velocity okay so you have to calculate this this parameter and in here okay the fruit number is going to be uh, zero because there is no velocity so that that's all okay uh, in the case of the of the theta, this angle, what I do is I suggest that you do these calculations for say two angles, five and ten, and uh, what we can do is we can see if there is much of a difference. Okay, if there is a large difference, well, in that case, what we can do is we can take an average, and that and that's it. Okay, otherwise, you if the the, the differences are small. We just take simply uh, the, the lower value and that's it. There's no, no big thing about it. Uh, this is uh, the description. This is again, this is the work that you have to download from the web. So you can see, oh man, you can see here the, the, all these formulations to estimate the uh, wave damping coefficient. Okay, so this is uh, Juan Pinto's work. Uh, this is the model. In this case, the first set of states has no velocity, okay? This is something that we are going to be doing, okay, on Friday, okay? What we need to do is do a first, a, an, a, an inclining experiment, then you can determine GM, okay? And then, what we can do is we can, uh, as you can see here, uh, we can incline the model in the wave tank. Since it is very long, it will take uh, some, some time for the waves to reach the end and, and coming back, come back. So we will have time to record probably five or six uh, cycles. And from there, you can apply a uh, uh, logarithmic decrement and from there, you can get the damping coefficient. Okay, so you, you can have a damping coefficient from Imeno's formulation and another damping coefficient from uh, experimental tests, and we can compare. Okay, 
you know, you're going to do that. Uh, we're not going to do this because we assume that the oscillations in general are hopefully are not going to be that that large. So we can assume that the, the, the system is just linear. Okay, in this case, we are not going to use advanced velocity. So this is not to you. If in some case you need to estimate, well, this is could be a good preference to you. Uh, so you can see here how this coefficient B1 can be employed to uh, estimate the damping coefficient. This is just to see that uh, this is a message that we should emphasize here at the university. Right? Many cases, we can apply empirical methods, but remember that empirical comes from experiment, experimental data. So if you want to apply them, you have to be sure that the range of the application is correct. I mean, the case where you want to apply it is inside the range of the application of the formulation. Otherwise, you're gonna get very strange results, okay? And that's the, the message with this figure, okay? When you have low uh, weight, okay, especially the, the section coefficient was very low compared with the applicable. And that's why we have something like this. In this loading condition, you see that the weight is larger. In this case, the, um, the section coefficient was kind of close to the range of the application. And you see that the applicability is it's there because we are very close with the formulations. Okay, so we're ready for the last topic of this uh, chapter. And so we're going to present a very simple, that's why we call it estimation, okay? Of the excitation moment, okay? Coming from the waves acting on the ship. And of course, the, the most important uh, condition and situation is when the ship receives the waves from the beam, right? In that case, we're gonna have the largest uh, moment and of course, the largest response. And that's the case that we're going to be analyzing. Okay, uh, simplification. We're going to be uh, including only hydrostatic effects. Okay, that means that if you have the wave acting, we are going to say, okay, in this area, we're gonna have an extra uh, buoyancy in this position and that generates a moment. That's the idea. We're not going to include any uh, dynamic effects, okay? So um, this is a situation in general, okay? So this is the section of the, of the ship. And uh, we consider that the wave is like this, in this case. Uh, and what we can do is we can think that we have taken out of the system the vertical oscillation, okay? So we can expect that uh, even though in, in, in most, of the, most of the time we have an, an extra or a deficiency of buoyancy, this uh, oscillation is taken out of the picture, okay? So uh, we see that uh, we have extra buoyancy here and we have a defect here. So what we're going to do is just try to evaluate this uh, amount of force. Uh, we're going to assume that this is a triangle. And uh, after that, we can say, uh, we can calculate how much moment this force generates with respect to this point. We are going to assume that this is similar to that. So what we can do is we can take this, multiply by this arm and double to consider both sides. And that's it. So more or less, that's the idea. Please be careful, people. This is little b. This is just half beam of the ship. Okay, so let's do it. So we're going to assume that these are long waves. Okay, so that means that in general, long from here to here, this is uh, lambda over two. You see that this is a throw, this is a crest, okay? 
So this is considered that this is very large compared with the beam. So we can say that this is like a straight line. Okay. So if that's not correct, then uh, of course we are going to include an error. But in general, we assume that that's correct. Okay, so this area here is gonna be this B times this height. And this height is going to be approximated as the slope of the wave multiplied by the, the semi beam. So this is height. This is the base. So one half base times height over two, uh, one half base times height, that's the area. And in the x direction, we, I, we multiply by dx, okay? And we multiply by uh, rho gamma, that's, uh, I'm sorry, rho g, that's gamma, that's force. As simple as that. As I said before, this is a hydrostatic simplification, okay? Now, uh, if we multiply this by an arm, we're gonna have moment, right? So we assume again, that since we're uh, taking very long waves, okay? Uh, this figure is a triangle. So we know that the centroid of this triangle is two thirds from the lowest uh, corner. So multiply this, the force by two thirds, that will give us the moment generated by one side. And again, we assume that it's symmetric. So that's why we have these two here. That's it. So we take this, put it into here, and that's the moment. Okay, so we, uh, these two cancels that and all of this. So that's the differential moment acting from the waves on the ship are uh, generating rolling, roll motion. Okay, simple, very simple. And of course here, we have to be careful because uh, uh, the Y points in that direction. And you see that this is the Y in the ship, but the ship can move in the many directions with respect to the wave system. Okay, so we have to be careful with that. And that's the topic of the next uh, slide, okay? And also, okay, this uh, is an extreme simplification, okay? So what uh, the IMO says that this is like the uh, theoretical, let's call it the theoretical slope, okay? And uh, the IMO, okay, includes a, a correction a factor in order to include the effective slope. Here, we're not going to include it. Hopefully during these days, I will try to review formulation and I'll try to give it to you so you can apply it, okay? But uh, you have to have in mind that. This is an extreme simplification. Okay, said that, let's go on. Let's continue. So now, the thing is that the Y direction points in the direction of the beam. And that's not necessarily the direction of the Y in the wave system. Okay, so here we are. So let's suppose that the waves are moving in the Y, in the X prime direction, okay? So this is the direction of the waves. And this is the X prime direction, okay? Now here I have my ship and it's moving. And this is the X direction, okay? I have the Y in that direction. And of course, uh, X cross Y that give you Z coming out of the figure, okay? Now the angle between these two X and X prime axis is beta. And the ship is moving with velocity UT, okay? We assume that U is constant, so it can uh, be considered as a inertial reference system, okay? Now, this is Y, 
okay? This is y, and we need to specify the derivative in that. But we usually specify x prime. So we have to be careful with that. So this is the uh, profile of the wave. And please, this is x prime, which is this x prime, okay? So what we need to do is relate this x prime with the x, y system, which is moving with the ship, okay? And that's easy, just trigonometric relationship is this one here. So x prime, that's the measure from here until here. Okay. And that's equal to the distance from here to here, that's x. And if we multiply by cosine, that will give us up to here. And now we have to subtract this. So that's the relationship that we have here. Okay. So from here to here, that's x. From here to here is ut. ut cosine beta is from here to here. And then we subtract this little thing. This, I'm sorry, this is not here. It has to be up to here. There. Okay. Okay, now uh, we have X prime here, so we can replace this into here. And after that, we have this. Now, and you see that I have Y here, and we need to differentiate this with respect to Y, so it's easy to proceed, okay? Uh, differentiate that. So we have to be careful because I have an I and K here, so it's I, K, sine, beta, I have it here, resulting from the differentiation, okay? We have Z zero, we have the rest, and that's it. Now, what we can do is we can replace this expression into the expression for the moment, okay? So that's again the derivative, and we can replace, and that's what we have. Okay. Um, very long expression. We have to be careful. At the end, I'm going to check the units just in case. That's something that we always have to be worried about. Now, this is the differential. If we integrate over the whole uh, length of the ship, we can have the total moment acting on the ship. This is a very simple approach. Um, Hydrostatic effects only. And uh, yeah, the, of course, we cannot expect to have, uh, uh, I mean, this, we, easily we can think that uh, this is just a simplification. Okay. Um, another thing that we can do is that uh, we can consider beam waves. Okay, in the case of beam waves, remember that's something that we discussed uh, in the previous chapter. We know that beta, it's 90 degrees. Okay, in that case, okay, this term here is gonna be equal to one because cosine of 90 is zero. So e to the zero is one, and this is also one. So this is the simplification that we have, okay? After doing this, we have that this is the inertia. Okay, so that's the transfer inertia uh, of the water plane, okay? Uh, and that's a, a hydrostatic property that you usually have available in the case of, uh, of the ship. So that's something that we have. Uh, in some cases, uh, people tend to put this 
as the product of BMT times volume. Okay? In some cases. Uh, and there are other uh, versions of this formulation in which uh, you can replace this uh, instead of BMT, they call it, they, they replace it by GMT in another correction. But this is just uh, one version of this formula, very simple formula. Okay, uh, before we go on, uh, let's, uh, let's do a, an analysis of the units. So I have rho g, so that's a uh, force and length cube. I have zeta zero, that's the amplitude of the wave. I have k, what are the units of k? Uh, is Lopez, what are the units of k? Lopez? Uh, M, no, uh, one over L. Yes, one over two pi over lambda, so it's one over L. One over L. I have inertia. Units of inertia, Mr. Zamora, units of inertia. L yes, so we cancel these two. We cancel three and we have F times L, yes. So everything is, it's fine. Okay, now in Bhattacharya's book, you can see a formula for this uh, parameter. And you'll see that uh, they don't use uh, complex notation. So instead of E to the IKX cosine beta, they put it, uh, the corresponding uh, real term, okay? Because remember that I have an I here at the beginning, okay? An I here, and this E to the I, it gives you also a sign. So that uh, you can relate that to the version that you see in Bhattacharya's. But that's, I just want you to, to know that it is, even though it is a very simple formulation, it still has some uh, applicability, some, not much, but some applicability. Okay, um, in case of a rectangle, people, the, in the case of the, the, the system that you're going to be using, uh, in, in your case, you're gonna have something like this, okay? Uh, the model is a simplified one, okay? You have two, to chine, something like that. You're gonna be floating, okay, without any trim, okay? So this is constant. Okay, people, give me, how much is I sub T? How much is I sub T? Everybody integrate that. Please, everybody turn on your cameras. I want to see you that you're working. Everybody turn on your cameras. Integrate that for the inertia. Integrate for the inertia. Two-thirds BQ DX. Two-thirds DQ BQ DX. Mr. Barba, can you turn on your cameras, please? Mr. Matute. Delgado, Manrique. Hello, Manrique. Zambrano. Zambrano, are you there? Miss Pinkai, good morning or good afternoon. Hi, 
Hey, doctor, I can't turn on my camera because I don't have camera in this computer. Okay, no problem, no problem. Mr. Zambrano, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Right now, I cannot turn my camera on either. Okay, fine, fine. Okay, but at least give me the answer, Mr. Zambrano. It's Mikai. Okay, I can allow you to stay here with no camera, but you have to give me the answer. Nothing is cheap in this class. Nothing is free. The answer, Sambrano? You got the answer? Uh, four BQ by multiplied by L over three. Say that again, please. Four BQ multiplied by L over three. Like this? Over. What do you say, Pinkai? Is this correct or what? I don't have an answer yet. Okay. Enrique, you have it? Yeah, uh, Q over three multiply B, Q, uh, multiply L, the length. Okay, I'm not going to give you my answer. So you have to do it yourself, okay? Miss Vega, do you have it? Uh, I, I integrate the X, X square B, uh, multiply the beam, uh, I obtain L, L cube over 12. No, 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 no. The inertia, here is the formula. Here is the formula. So I'm going to write it here. The inertia is equal to two thirds, the integral from minus L over two until L over two, V of X, uh, cute, yes. What is little b, Miss Matias? What is little b? Oh, Miss Matias, can't you talk? No, okay. Uh, Miss Lopez, what is little b? What is little b? I've been. I've been, exactly. No. B over two. So in this case, in the in the in the model, she model simplified that you are going to be using this Friday. The beam is constant. Okay, so this little b doesn't depend on x; it's constant. So you can simplify that. Mr. Jimenez, you have an answer for this? Yeah, Mr. B to the Q all over twelve. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. Is L B Q over 12. Now we have to be careful because the beam is twice little b. So be careful with that. Okay. We have everything, right? Because inertia, we can measure the beam, we can measure the length. Uh, all what we need is the amplitude of the wave. And so you are going to be recording, video recording, the the surface, okay? And then uh, with a scale that we have, you can measure the top, the bottom, and you can see the difference. And that's going to be the height divided by two, that's the wave amplitude. So you got gamma, 
z0 k in the case of k again if you uh, record the profile of the wave you can take the one uh, crest to the next one in width and scale you can easily see the distance and that's it's going to be lambda and you can relate that remember that uh, uh, you, you can check that uh, you can an oscillation and, and you can record the, uh, the, the get the time to complete one cycle. So that's the period. You can relate that to frequency and you can relate that with the dispersion relation to the lambda. So you can check that. Everything. Now, once you have all of these parameters, you can plug back into the equation and we can solve it. So that's what we want from you. So you have uh, the inertia with respect to the center of gravity, the added inertia, that's A44, uh, damping coefficient, we assume that it is constant. Uh, delta GM, again, we assume that we are in the linear region of the oscillation. And on the right-hand side, we have M0 e to the I omega T, okay? M0 was already explained how to be calculated. Now to proceed, okay? This is the solution. Okay, then in this case, theta, big theta, it's a, uh, is the amplitude, so this is the amplitude. But remember that this is complex in general. This is complex, okay? Don't be afraid of that, okay? We replace this into here, here, and here, and this is what we have. We know this, so this is real, real, and this is ima uh, imaginary. Uh, we need this, so we take this to the right-hand side, and this is what we will obtain. Okay, and we know immediately that uh, when the frequency is about natural frequency, this and that will cancel each other. If you cancel this in the denominator, the quotient, which is this one here, the amplitude, it is going to increase. Okay, and that's uh, what we call resonance. So in the test that we're going to do this Friday, that's what we're going to be trying, trying to uh, describe. Okay, uh, let's see if we can, uh, we can get it right correctly. We can observe that, uh, that, uh, Phenomena. Here I have a video. You see the video, people? No? No. No, you don't. Okay, let me. It's a very simple thing, but uh, now it. Thank you. 
Okay, uh, let's take a break here. And when we return, we're going to describe the work that you have to complete in the next uh, sessions, okay? Uh, this was, uh, I think it was very simple explanation of some of the things that are going through this raw problem, okay? So that's why I just uh, wanted you to share with you. Okay, uh, and the, the main uh, message here is that uh, for small ships, uh, we need something because they move a lot. Okay, let's take a break. And when we return, we're going to be uh, describing the, the assignment for next week. <laughs> 